Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chansa. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 11th of November. Indian Prime Minister Modi's ruling alliance wins key Bihar state election. PPP leader Bilawal Bhutto claims to provide constitutional rights to people of Gilgit Baltistan. And mesmerizing autumn season on peak in India's Kashmir Valley. And now for all the details. India's health ministry said on Wednesday that India has scaled an unprecedented peak with active coronavirus cases, dropping below the 500,000 mark for the first time after 106 days. Meanwhile, as the world cheers the Pfizer coronavirus vaccine showing positive results, experts have said there is not much hope in it for India as its need to be capped at minus 70 degrees Celsius and such logistics could be difficult to arrange. As India's coronavirus cases tally surged past 8.6 million on Wednesday, the country's health ministry said that India has scaled an unprecedented peak with active coronavirus cases dropping below the 500,000 mark for the first time after 106 days. The ministry said it assumes significance in the context of many countries reporting a surge in their active case load. Meanwhile, as the world cheers the Pfizer coronavirus vaccine showing positive results, experts in the country have said there is not much hope in it for India. Director of India's Premier Health Institute, Ames Dr. Randeep Guleria on Wednesday said it is an encouraging news, but the vaccine needs to be kept at minus 70 degrees Celsius and such logistics could be difficult to arrange in India. It has to be kept at minus 70 degrees centigrade. Now that for low and middle income countries and uh, a large part of the world is going to be a big challenge to maintain the cold chain because having a vaccine to be kept at such a low temperature, especially when we're going to smaller towns or rural India is going to be a challenge. Guleria also said that super spreading events with attendees not adhering to COVID-19 protocols must be stopped to curb spike in COVID-19 cases in the Indian capital, New Delhi, which has been facing a third wave of infections. New Delhi has been grappling to control rising virus cases in recent days, with factors like pollution, cold weather and festivals playing a major role. After weeks of bitter campaigning, three phases of voting, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's ruling BJP-led alliance was announced as winner of the Bihar state election on Wednesday. The first election in the country amidst conditions created by COVID-19 has paved the way for the return of Chief Minister Nitish Kumar for the fourth successive term in office. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's coalition retained power in Bihar state. Results showed on Wednesday in what was a referendum on Modi's handling of COVID-19 and which may boost his chances in three more state elections next year. Modi's ruling BJP, Bharatiya Janta Party supporters and workers continued their celebrations at the party office in capital Patna on Wednesday. BJP led by National Democratic Alliance including Janata Dal United and Lok Jan Shakti Party won 125 seats out of 243 seats, while Mahagat Bandhan, the Grand Alliance constituting of Rashtriya Janata Dal led by Tejas V. Yadav, Indian National Congress and others were on 110 seats. Chirag Paswan's Lok Jan Shakti Party, which was the source of much frustration for Chief Minister Nitish Kumar, won just one seat. The first election in the country amidst conditions created by COVID-19 has paved the way for the return of Nitish Kumar for the fourth successive term in office. I want to thank the people of the country that the fourth time they have the trust of the NDA. And there is no doubt in Hindustan's reality. There will be a lot of people who have the trust of the fourth time.
Prime Minister Modi took to Twitter and thanked the people of Bihar for backing the NDS development agenda. After Bihar, the BJP is expected to do well in state elections in Assam and West Bengal next year, though it has yet to form a strong base in the southern state of Tamil Nadu that also votes in 2021. With election in the illegally occupied territory of Gilgit Baldistan just around the corner, Pakistan People's Party Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari has claimed he will provide the people in the region their due constitutional rights, which they have been deprived of over the years. Zardari said that if elected, his party will not only turn the region into a province, but it will also transform the lives of its people. Pakistan People's Party or PPE leader Bilawal Bhutto Zardari has claimed that he will provide the people of Gilgit Baltistan their due constitutional rights, which they have been deprived of for years now. While addressing an event, part of his political campaign ahead of the Gilgit Baltistan Legislative Assembly election on November 15, Zardari said that if elected, the PPE will not only turn Gilgit Baltistan into a province, but it will also transform the lives of its people. Pakistan People's Party yahan nahi rukna chahte hain hame shak hai ki kuch aise log kuch ye jo jamaatein jo aakhri waqt mein hamara page pe aa chuke hain hame shak hai ki ye soch rahe honge ki subah to agar milta hai hame gandam ka subsidy bhi wapas de कुछ ऐसे आपके मुखालिफ सोच रहे होंगे कि चलिए सुबह तो देंगे मगर टैक्स में इजाफा करेंगे मैं आपको साफ बता रहा हूं कि हम किसी को इजाजत नहीं देंगे The PPE chair also promised of helping hundreds of young degree holding job aspirants from Gilgit Baltistan by providing them employment opportunities the Imran Khan government had earlier announced granting provisional province status to Gilgit Baltistan which was not received well by the people of the illegally occupied region who have protested against Islamabad's decision of integrating the illegally occupied region with the rest of Pakistan. A part of India's erstwhile princely state of Jammu and Kashmir, Gilgit Baltistan was annexed by Pakistan illegally more than seven decades ago. In news from Afghanistan, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani, while addressing the virtual summit of Shanghai Cooperation Organization on Tuesday, said that violence by Taliban has increased substantially despite commitments. Meanwhile, the Afghan government has also claimed the group has redeployed most of their released prisoners to the battlefields, breaking promises in the peace process. Afghanistan's President Ashraf Ghani, while highlighting the progress so far in the Afghan peace process at the virtual summit of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization or SCO on Tuesday, said that violence has remained high by the Taliban despite their commitments. President Ghani said that faced with multiple forms of turmoil, peace remains the most urgent and important priority for the Afghanistan. He also mentioned last week's Kabul University attack in which over 30 people, mostly students, were killed and called it a symptom of cult of violence. The attack was claimed by the militant group Islamic State, but Afghan government officials have claimed there is evidence of Taliban's involvement. Unfortunately, not only the promised reduction of violence in comprehensive ceasefire has not been realized, but the violence by the Taliban is increased substantially. The inhuman attack on Kabul University, regardless of who claimed responsibility, is a, is a symptom of the cult of violence. Meanwhile, the Afghan government on Tuesday also accused Taliban has redeployed most of their released prisoners to the battlefields, breaking promises in the peace process. The Taliban has, however, rejected the claims. India's Foreign Secretary Harshwardhan Shringla concluded his two-day Maldives visit, during which Mali and New Delhi signed four agreements, including on Greater Mali Connectivity Project on Tuesday. The Indian High Commission in a series of tweets said 
The two-day visit served to reinforce core values of the Maldives-India partnership. Shingla had called on President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli on Monday and briefed him on the satisfactory status of implementation of decisions taken during his interactions with Prime Minister Narendra Modi in December 2018 and June 2019. President Soli had expressed his deep appreciation for the support received from India in dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic, in particular, the $250 million US dollar financial assistance provided in September 2020 as budget support. Sringla also held talks with Maldivian leaders to bolster ties. Nepal will provide free COVID-19 test and treatment as the total number of infections was set to cross the 200,000 mark. This follows a Supreme Court order for free treatment after the government asked citizens who could not afford to pay to do so, limiting free testing and care to only those who couldn't. The number of coronavirus cases in Nepal looks set to cross the 200,000 mark as the country also said it will provide free COVID-19 tests and treatment. The country of 30 million people has 199,760 total cases of coronavirus and 1,148 deaths as of Wednesday. It recorded 2,736 new daily cases and 22 deaths according to the government data. The government's move to provide free COVID-19 tests and treatment follows a Supreme Court order for free treatment last week after the government asked citizens who could afford to pay to do so limiting free testing and care only to those who couldn't. We are seeing so many severe cases nowadays. Yeah? Before that, there was only mild cases or those who came from outside. Now we are having cases in community. Yeah? And in community, there are variety of groups of patients. Like somebody might be suffering from chronic disease, disease chronic disease, like kidney disease, lungs, liver, yeah. and these people are very vulnerable to the corona infection. Nepal enforced strict lockdown measures after a second positive case in March and infections were below many of their South Asian neighbours. In June, protesters who were demanding for more tests and better care for the coronavirus clashed with the police, who used water cannons to break up the demonstrations. <laughs> जनता और बनी अब जो भी जागरे उन्हें पढ़ने चाहिए देखिए ना उन्हें तो मोटा मोटी अब मास्क लगा रहे हैं इधर को आई ना वो तीस तीस देखें इंचा तो रखे चावने सामान्य जितने भी मेंटेन बागों साइन है अब हमें भीड़ बाढ़ अब आसान तीर गायों में और जिपन धेरे ने भीड़ बाढ़ सा अब Nepal, which has poor health infrastructure, said it has testing facilities for 23,000 samples, but an average of fewer than 15,000 tests are conducted daily. Carpet of famous chinar leaves in India's Jammu and Kashmir are pulling tourists to Srinagar city to enjoy the autumn season despite coronavirus pandemic. Visitors are thronging parks in the valley and can be seen clicking photographs with chinar leaves rustling under their feet. Tourists coming in is good news for the tourism sector, which has suffered in view of coronavirus lockdown since March this year. Tourists are thronging India's northern Jammu and Kashmir state to enjoy autumn season in the valley, giving a boost to its tourism affected by coronavirus pandemic. Dotted with chinar trees mainly, Kashmir adores a unique look during this season as the leaves turn red before they fall. This season also marks the beginning of winters in Kashmir and locals collect fallen chinar leaves and burn them during winters. I came specifically during the autumn season. Why? Because I heard it's really beautiful here and I could see like you guys can see we have this beautiful chinar and the colour during the autumn is like wonderful. Kashmir is considered as one of the best tourism destinations in India with the hospitality of the valley well known that adds to the popularity of the tourism sector. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button